Good call, bad call. Uh, we'll go to Weston the... first on that one. So, first good call, <laughs> Weston. <laughs> Weston, what? Oh man, the one time I throw it over to Weston and he doesn't even. God, that guy's just so typical. On the Dallas Opera Network, you're listening to Opera Box Score. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Wherever you are, however you're listening. It's America's talk radio show about opera. It's Opera Box Score. I'm your host, George Cedarquist, joined this week by Oliver Camacho. All right. On the show, Oliver and I go inside the huddle with Eric Smith and Miguel Cantu from American Baroque Opera Company to have them tell us what is the only human endeavor more expensive than war Their pandemic season wraps up with a puppet Don Quixote, and we'll learn about their return to live theater, plus two-minute drill. If you plan on going to the Met, you better plan on having your proof of vaccination in addition to your ascot and opera glasses. If you're watching on TDO, you don't need to be vaccinated. I do recommend it, but you can also subscribe to the podcast on Stitcher. Just favorite the show on Apple Podcasts. Oliver Camacho, I feel like we're empty nesters. That's okay. In honor of uh, some historic event that's actually happening today, um, we are taking on our feminine personas. I am Olivia, and you are going to be Georgina, because um, as we speak, probably, uh, for the first time, there's an all-female broadcast crew for a major league baseball game, an MLB game. It's the Orioles against the Rays, the Baltimore Orioles against the Tampa Bay Rays. And uh, Melly Newman will be handling the play-by-play duties. Sarah Langs will be providing analysis. And Alana Rizzo will be doing reporter duties uh, for the game between, before the game. And then there's a pregame um, with Heidi Watney and Lauren Gardner. So it's 2021, and this is a first. And it shouldn't be, but it is. So we are marking it <laughs> on Opera Box Score. I just love that. I would love to be watching this baseball game right now and just hear an all-female chorus of sports voices Mm -hmm. in my ears. The downside, of course, is that I would have to watch the Orioles play baseball. (laughs) Uh, Ashley says, hey, props to Luke Prokop. He's an NHL prospect uh, and has just come out as the NHL's first gay player. This happened recently, of course, in the NFL. It's happened in the NBA already, but this was a barrier that had not been broken in the NHL ever, which I think is pretty darn cool. Let's talk some opera. Huddle up. Let's go inside the huddle. Established in 2017, the American Baroque Opera Company in Dallas stages intimate productions of operas from the Baroque era and on period instruments. In addition to presenting works of well-known composers, including Handel, Vivaldi, and Purcell, They've resurrected operas of lesser-known Barokers. Artistic director Eric Smith and executive director Miguel Cantu join us from Dallas. Tenor, deluxe, Kimon Mara, friend of the show, 
singing an aria from a rare opera by Vivaldi called Montezuma, and that aria, Brilleran per noi più belle. Uh, he performed this for the American Broke Opera Company uh, in Dallas, Texas. And our guests are Eric Smith and Miguel Cantu, the, I guess you guys are the co-directors of this Baroque Opera Company, you would say one are, one is the general director, one is the executive director. Who knows what that really means? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm artistic director and he's executive. So okay. yeah, yeah, we have our... <laughs> Very good. So yeah. that's Eric speaking. Eric, you want to give us a little institutional history of the American Baroque Opera Company? Sure. Uh, my pleasure. So we are based in Dallas and we incorporated in 2017 um, we did our first sort of small show. We did an opera cabaret um, at the beginning of our 2017-2018 season. And we did our first fully stage show in the spring of 2018, which was Handel's Alcina. And we've been going strong since. So we're coming up on our fifth anniversary season. We're excited to share with everyone what we're doing. Fantastic. Again, both of you, welcome to the show. Talk me super quickly through the opera landscape in Dallas and how you fit into that. Great. Um, yeah, Dallas has a really great opera company, Dallas Opera. Um, We've heard of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, you know, they do a lot of great shows. Um, they don't do a lot of Baroque opera. And uh, Baroque opera has always been a dream of mine. Ever since I was in college, one of my professors asked me, um, what do you want to do, you know, with your life? And I said, I want to do Baroque opera. And she said, oh, you have to move to Europe. And so mm -hmm. I thought, well, I guess we have to start our own. <laughs> and well, uh, Eric, you play cello. I do. And Miguel, you are a violinist and a violist. Uh huh. Yeah, viola first and then violin, actually. Okay. Not many viola yeah. parts in Baroque operas. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> when that happens, I'll I'll move over to the violin section. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you both perform in the band uh for your shows? Yeah, we do. When there's when there's a part for me, I'm in there. Um and I I mean for me I always I used to have a company that fell flat on its face after a couple of years, but um to perform and to manage uh, is always was always to me very difficult and my performance always suffered because there's so many things that people don't think about i mean george produces opera himself there's so many moving parts with the show and to have to also participate in the making of the art you know on the day of i think is um is a lot yes it's yeah, a full, it is. it's a full-time job <laughs> yeah For it's sure. it's not the most you know it seems a little glamorous when you're in the pit playing having the time of your life but then Hey, who's gonna drive the U-Haul truck? You know, <laughs> to to the to put the you know to put away the set. Yeah, and to move the harpsichord. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're gonna talk about the past briefly before we move into the present. Kaman Mara was one of your catch hires, catch castings. What what was that first show with him? The first show we did with him was Montezuma, and we were actually both involved in a summer pay to sing um thing and uh he came in and he was singing an aria from uh Cesare and I heard him sing and I thought you're hired I don't know what for what but you are hired <laughs> um and then it came up it happened that uh the Montezuma has a male soprano part in it which as you know it's difficult to find uh males who can sing in that range and, you know, I mean, Key can hit a high C like it's nobody's business. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I felt like the role was made for him. And it's the same, actually, for this next season coming up. There's a male soprano part um, that's that's perfect for him. So we're going to see him again. That's awesome. Here we are in the present. We're in this pandemic. Is it over? Is it not over? Nobody knows. What we do know is that the arts, the performing arts and opera have changed dramatically. How did ABOC pivot during this pandemic? And as you've done digital and virtual work, what, what have you found to be the, the pros and cons of doing Baroque rep in that form? Miguel? 
Uh, well, we we did. We decided to do an all digital season. Um, we produced. It was called ABOC at Home, and um, you know, it was going into it. We almost had no idea exactly what we were do and what we were going to do until it was just like presented right to us. I.e., the very first day of recording, <laughs> it was things like you know video recording and and like having like live versus studio was we were on a different planet and it was a tough pivot but we did it i mean you know we we were able to come up with some really awesome productions we all learned um this year how to become you know sound editors and video editors and how to yeah. optimize things and you know how to use a green screen you know and yeah. <laughs> i mean those aren't our i mean i work a lot in baroque repertoire those aren't our skills those are not things exactly. that are um natural for us those are not i mean technology and baroque music unless you're anthony roth costanzo they usually <laughs> don't work well together i mean baroque yeah. music is all about acoustic it's all about fabric it's all about you know movement it's all about being seduced by like everything you can put on a stage and yeah. all the ornaments you know in the aria and all the beautiful plucked instruments and you know quiet plucked instruments don't sound great um over you know over zoom you know it's just yeah. that's just a fact you know <laughs> yep yeah there's and there's well, there's such a there's such a like a sorry there's such a like visual element to mm -hmm. opera yeah. um and you know with every opera that we go into it's like well what kind of spectacle can we create and we didn't want it to just be you know single shot camera on on a stage you know that type of look we wanted to give our audience you know something special that they were gonna watch want to watch more than just one time yeah um and, and something that was gonna be like al always always interesting and always available yes yeah. so to, we, to our audience we came up with in the fall three shorter things to do um which was you know manageable with the time we had right after the pandemic started we didn't know if we were gonna have a season so we did three short films the first being monteverdi's tancredi and um that show not a baroque opera by the way yeah exactly <laughs> um so we have the scene of ten credit so we did just a short um video and the production team decided they did this really beautiful element to it as a dia de los muertos um since the story is sort of talking about remembrance of the dead um and it was really beautifully shot um it was a learning curve with the sound trying to figure out how to do you know, live singing and music while they're doing acting. Um, because we, you know, we weren't trying the lip sync thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we did, um, Handel's Lucrezia, which is, you know, one woman show and, um, the soprano who also came up with the whole concept did a really fantastic job. And, and, you know, these are ways for us to push, um, Baroque opera into sort of more accessible ways for people. And that's sort of what one of our missions as an opera company. Well, your uh, pandemic season is drawing to a close. And right now we are anticipating the release of the Telemann Don Quixote. Can you tell us about how that production is going to look? Miguel, you want to talk about that one? Sure. Yeah. So this one's going to be... Um, not an all human cast, but an all animal cast. Um, we have, uh, our Don Quixote as, as a lion. Um, kind of, it's kind of, you know, with the lion as a theme in Don Quixote. Um, and that. So like uh, a, a lactual lion. Puppet. 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 No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are puppets, not an actual lion. Puppets. <laughs> I yes, was puppets, waiting yeah, for yeah. puppets. Oh, That's sorry. awesome. <laughs> and this is where the yeah. green screen comes in, presumably, right? Yeah, our, yep, yep, yep. The uh, video production guys did a lot of, I mean, basically like 100% green screen effects. That makes, that just gives me night sweats hearing about like the amount of <laughs> editing and tech that goes into that. Boy, do I feel your pain. We yeah. had a conversation with um, the uh, opera director of Northwestern University's Bean and School of Music. 
And um, we knew that this project was in the works called Orfeo Remote, uh, where he gave you know the students basically instructions to film themselves. And they all like learned their part and then lip synced to themselves singing. And, you know, the orchestra was also all done virtually. And it was, and, you know, so this guy, Joachim Schromberger, he, in the end, was, uh, he had whatever thousands of assets that he had to, you know, cut together and turn into a webisode opera. I mean, George, did you have anything to do with that editing process or? I didn't. Thank the Lord. That sort of stuff just <laughs> freaks, freaks me out. <laughs> Guys, as we move on to the coming season, then first up is your first French piece of repertoire. Am I right? Um, I, it's our first full French Baroque opera. We had done um, a small chamber opera by Charpentier um, in the past, but this is the first fully... Um, full, you know, Baroque opera that we're, uh, French Baroque opera that we're doing. Um, and I think it's a, it's a really good one to step into. People will recognize some of the melodies. Um, and I think for people who don't know French Baroque opera, but love opera, this is a great way for them to be introduced with, you know, trios and duets and choruses and, you know, that kind of thing that uh, I think people will really love. And it's a North American debut also. Good Call, Bad Call on Opera Box Score. Good Call, Bad Call. Uh, we'll go to Weston first on that one. So first Good Call, <laughs> Weston. <laughs> Weston. What? Oh, man, the one time I throw it over to Weston and he doesn't even. God, that guy's just so typical. Oliver, what do you got? Um, good call to Santa Fe Opera. Um, they just had their prima of a world premiere, Lord of Cries, by the husband uh, composer librettist team of John Corleano and Mark Adamo. Uh, and the show stars friend of the show, Anthony Roth Costanzo, and is directed by friend of the show, James Dara. So that happened over the weekend. And uh, I am actually going to head out to Santa Fe uh, and I've already received wonderful hospitality from the people at Santa Fe Opera. So I'm looking forward to being there next <laughs> month. Uh, and shout out to first year apprentice soprano Catherine Henry, who replaces Susanna Phillips withdrawing from the production for personal reasons. That's the same production for, for yes. Lord of Christ. Yes. Awesome title. That is it for this week's edition of America's Talk radio show about opera. Our announcer is Norm Waddell. He's at normwaddell.com. On Facebook, search for Opera Box Score. On Twitter and Instagram, we're at Opera Box Score. Help us deepen that bench of listeners by liking and sharing our social media posts. Email us your hot takes at operaboxscore at gmail.com. Subscribe to the podcast on Stitcher. Just favorite the show on Apple Podcasts. The views and opinions expressed on Opera Box Score are solely those of the show's creative team. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts of this show without the express written consent of Opera Box Score is. <laughs> Our creative consultant is Oliver Camacho. Our audio and video editor is Weston Williams. I'm George Cedarquist. Along with our guests tonight, Eric Smith and Miguel Cantu, asking you to continue the conversation about opera as you make lists of operas without roles for baritones. We're back with an all-new show next week when we're going to try to get James Dara on the show. Plus, you get more opera headlines, more hot takes, and more co-hosts, we think. Join us 